Hey guys, how's it going? This is Billy Eat World, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favourite loadouts for DMRs in Battlefield 4. I call it the Support Marksman, and it's a particularly good setup for a whole range of situations, and probably one of the most effective setups for getting the most out of DMRs. Basically, this loadout consists of a DMR of your choice, the XM25 Airburst, preferably a fast firing pistol, and the ammo box. The whole idea behind this loadout is to have a range of different weapons that can deal with different situations, but the focus should be on mid to long range combat. It's not the easiest loadout to run with, but on the right maps and game modes it can be very effective, and it's not hard to get to the top of the leaderboard with this setup once you've figured out how to use it. In these clips I'm using my favourite DMR, the M39 EMR. For attachments on the M39, I normally run with either the hollow sight or the HD33, along with the magnifier, angled grip and either the flash hider or heavy barrel. The SVD, Mark 11 or Ace 53 could also be good substitutes, but personally I think that the M39 is probably the best all-round DMR in terms of damage, accuracy and rate of fire. Also, if you're running one of the long-range DMRs with this setup, I'd recommend that you try out the bipod, because on large maps, if you use it sparingly, they can turn a DMR into a devastating counter-sniping weapon. The ideal sidearm for this setup, I think, would be the 93R with mini RDS, laser sight, and suppressor. I know a lot of people like the G18 as well, but I'm not sure why, I just can't seem to do as well with it as I do with the 93R. Of all the pistols in Battlefield 4, in close quarters this burst fire pistol gives you probably the best chance at killing an enemy running with an automatic weapon. Now as for the rest of the support marksman loadout, the gadgets are really where this loadout starts to shine. The issue with DMRs is that while they kill with very few bullets, you'll often need to fire a lot of bullets to land the three hits that you need to kill someone at long range. What this means is that when you're running a DMR and a passive playstyle with any other class, at some point you're bound to run out of ammo. The biggest drawback to running out of ammo with a DMR is that when you're running one alongside a pistol like the 93R, with the rate of fire the automatic pistols fire at, you'll no doubt be out of pistol ammo very soon as well. The ammo box will mean that you'll always have a steady supply of ammo to keep plugging away at the enemy with, and this should improve your survivability and effectiveness quite a bit. Having ammo to spare will also help you to exploit the suppression of the larger DMR rounds, which can definitely be an important factor in winning a gunfight against an enemy recon. The other important use of the ammo box will be to resupply your other gadget, the XM25 Airburst. Now any of you who watch my channel on a regular basis would know that the Airburst is one of my favourite weapons, and that's because it kills enemies behind cover far better than any other weapon. If you don't already know how the XM25 works, check out my tutorial video in the description below, because it's not just a grenade launcher and it can be a bit tricky if you've never used it before. So in the next part of this video, I'm going to run you through some tips that you'll need to know to be effective with this loadout. But before you start flaming me in the comments about how bad DMRs are, make sure that you give all of these tips a decent try, and bear in mind that any specialised loadout will take practice to master. It might take some time to actually make this setup work for you, and just bear in mind it might go completely against your playstyle altogether if you're a hard and fast run and gun kind of guy. But anyway, the most important tip I can give you guys is not to engage a target firing on you unless you have no other choice. If you have the option of running back into cover, then this is always a better option than trying to outshoot an assault rifle. The suppression effect will kill the accuracy of a DMR and get you killed 90% of the time, so don't be afraid to retreat if the heat is on. Another tip that will help with this is to always stick near good cover. You'd be surprised how few people actually do this in the game, so if you make an effort to use cover, you'll have a big advantage over most players. And I guess it goes without saying that choosing your targets and keeping them at a distance is also a key thing to surviving with a DMR. Remember that you have an advantage over most automatic weapons at beyond 50 meters, but also remember that they have a huge advantage at closer ranges than this. This is obviously easier to do on bigger maps and game modes like Rush and Obliteration, so if you're wondering why you're not having much success with this loadout on Locker TDM, that's probably why. So just a few tips on the weapons themselves. With your DMR, remember to pace out your shots because spread increase per shot will kill your accuracy if you fire too fast. Spamming your weapon to kick in the suppression mechanic is fine, but still, if you're not pacing your shots to some degree, you'll really cut down your chances of landing the three hits that you need to kill an enemy. 
Also, remember that at longer ranges, bullet drop and lead on a target will become more important. So remember to aim in front of moving targets and above targets at more than about 150 meters. Now, being able to accurately determine the range to a target has always been easier for the recon class, but most people don't actually realize that the XM25 scope has a range finder. So don't be afraid to pull it out to find the range to a target to help zero your weapon. This probably won't matter so much if you're using a mid-range DMR like the M39, but if you're trying to get kills at 200 plus meters with the SVD and a 4x scope, then this is something that you'll definitely want to take advantage of. And speaking of the XM25, remember that the airburst is not immune to bullet drop. You can take out targets at ranges out to 150 meters or more, but you will need to aim a fair bit above your target to do this. Also, the muzzle velocity of the XM25 is ridiculously low, so you'll want to make sure that if you're trying to get long range kills, that your target is stationary. And just another note on the XM25, the biggest drawback of this weapon is its limited capacity and its limited starting ammo. You can run with the indirect fire perk to increase its starting ammo by another two magazines, but by far the easiest way to stay supplied is to throw down an ammo box before you start firing. It replenishes ammo pretty quickly and it actually reloads pretty fast too, but just remember that if you empty your magazine, you'll need to actually reload twice to get the full five rounds in your magazine. And finally, my last tip for this loadout is to remember that you're a support player running long range weapons in a support role. Let the assault players run and gun and don't be afraid to hang back and do what you do best, which is to take out snipers, machine gunners, engineers using launchers and any other tempting long range targets. If you do play this loadout well, you'll affect the battlefield more than you might think, and you'll definitely have a lot of fun while doing it. You'll most likely end up with more kills running this kit than if you were using a bolt action, and you'll stand a lot better chance in close quarters as well. But like I said before, this setup will take some skill to play correctly, so if you don't want to put in the time to learn the DMRs, or you're just blatantly anti-DMR to begin with, this loadout probably isn't for you. But anyway, that just about wraps it up. And as always, if you like what you see, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, please check out all my other Battlefield 4 videos. I've got them all linked in a playlist in the description below. If you'd like to suggest a topic for an upcoming video on this channel, then feel free to let me know in the comments of this video or send me a tweet on Twitter at BillyEatWorld. But anyway, until next time, guys, see you later and have a good one.